photo soundbite 12 looked at the basic principles of depth of field. This program presents them with photographic examples. They have been taken with a micro four thirds camera. Therefore, subtle differences will occur with larger format CSC and DSLR cameras and significant differences with compact and bridge cameras, as explained in Photo Soundbite 12. At Stowe, a small aperture in conjunction with a wide angle lens has increased sharpness from front to back. This has been extended further by moving the focus point from infinity to 50 feet. This increases foreground sharpness whilst keeping the background sharp as depth of field extends twice as much behind the focus point than in front and infinity kicks in at around 150 to 200 feet, particularly with standard or wide angle lenses. This is an aspect of hyperfocal distance achieving maximum depth of field at each aperture value, especially when using a small aperture or a wide angle lens. The opposite is seen at Colston Common. Only the bracken is sharp. Here, a large aperture, telephoto lens, and by focusing on the bracken instead of the background, has reduced depth of field. It also helps overall sharpness by taking the shot at 90 degrees so that the bracken is on the same plane. Depth of field is greatly reduced with close-ups. Bracken does not have much depth, but fungi does. For this, the aperture was set to f11, increasing depth of field so that all of the fungi are in focus. However, it has created a two-dimensional effect with very little depth. In the second fungi shot, the aperture was f3.2, significantly reducing depth of field, but increased sufficiently with a wide-angle lens so that the whole of the fungi is sharp. However, everything else is unsharp as it is on a different plane. Throwing the background out of focus is an effective artistic tool known as differential focusing. Arguably, the out of focus part of the image works best by being behind the subject, less so in front. A large aperture in conjunction with a standard or telephoto reduces depth of field, but to keep the background unsharp, it is essential to focus on the foreground subject, possibly manually. With the images of King's College Chapel, Cambridge, an f1.2 optic has reduced depth of field so much that its effect has been enlarged, especially noticeable where the composition has prominent foreground interest. The merits of this may be questionable, but the exercise clearly demonstrates how depth of field directs the eye, which can be very effective when used correctly. Here, a standard lens was used, equivalent to 50 millimeters in film. My work requires a good depth of field so that everything is sharp, especially foregrounds. Here, the aperture value is set at f11 with a wide angle lens focused at 50 feet. It is aided by micro four thirds technology, which increases depth of field at any setting without forfeiting differential focusing. Micro four thirds comes into its own in low light, even at f3.5, creating a handheld photograph that is sharp from back 
to front at these National Trust properties. Traditional photographic skills wins the day.